Hi, and thank you for tuning in to this introductory video on the term harvest expert within Alchemy Catalyst 10. If we were to look at some of the design goals that led to um, innovations within Catalyst 10, one of the things that was trending was uh, industry velocity. Um, people were talking about larger projects, more projects, uh, indeed more languages, and the requirement to scale uh, localization processes in an automated way perhaps was 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 evident. Um, of course with with rapid time to market being a requirement, the danger is that quality gets squeezed. So what we wanted to do was to ensure that we had a focus on linguistic quality, um, ensuring that consistency was was maintained, uh, translation consistency, for example, maintained even with scaled up projects. So to that end, we um, spoke with researchers and users and and designed. Um, uh, a terminology solution that uh, really benefits from Catalyst's unique position as a software localization tool. So Catalyst's projects tend to be very, very rich in term candidates, so it's best placed to generate these terminology databases. Um, the term harvest expert is what resulted, and how it works is that it will examine a Catalyst project and identify some potential terminology entries. Having identified some of these potential entries, or these candidates, we then examine the frequency of their use, presenting to the user uh, the statistics about the use of those terms, and uh, the user gets the chance to, to override um, override the the uh, default um, decisions within the expert and the ultimate goal is of course to generate a terminology database so we look for the terms we search for the for the usage of those terms within uh, some other content and then we generate a terminology database based on that information so if we were to have a look at how that looks within the product I have here a um, a catalyst project. It's a typical project and I open this just to, to point out the reason Catalyst is best placed to generate these term terminology databases. I have a, a typical project open here. It has uh, some software user interface for example. If I drill down to some of the menu content I'm going to flip into visual view here. I can see file, open, close, save, save as, um, window, navigator, workspace, results, help, help topics. So I can see, <coughs> I can see a lot of product names and feature names contained within my uh, menus. Likewise, if I'm to flip over to some of the user interface uh, screens, such as dialog boxes, I'm looking at terms like OK, cancel, help. These are things that are very definitely terminology. But if I look at all of the strings within this project, I can see that there's going to be too many. Um, I have some very good content for terminology, and I have some poor content for terminology. The term harvest's job is to separate those two lists. If I have a look at my previously translated version of this project, not only do I have um, those file, open, close, save, save as terms in English, but I already have these translated and it would be just fantastic if I could somehow extract all of this content without spending days um, separating the, the good terminology from the, from the, um, the, the default segments or the, the, the noise words within my project. Okay, so term harvest is how I do that. If I go to tools, term harvest expert, 
We said that we were going to identify uh, candidates. So we present the, um, the term harvest expert with a list of candidates or candidate project. Um, I browse and I can add any number of projects that are likely to contain candidates. In addition to that, I will ask, select a file that uh, perhaps talks about these terms and features. And Catalyst is going to examine the frequency and present to us the, um, the usage statistics of the terms found in the candidates file. So it's identifying um, the, t uh, the terms first. It's now analyzing the frequency, and it's going to present to us a list along with the uh, usage statistics for that for those terms. Okay, it's gone through um, a large number of segments there, and it's identified 420. Uh, segments that are likely to be considered terms. It's giving me some statistical control over these and I can I can add or remove some of these if I wish. If I increase the required frequency to three for example the number of included terms drops from 420 to 274. I'm going to put that back down to two. I'm suggesting here that if, if a segment is found and spoken about twice or more times, it's likely to be a term. I also have control over the maximum word count. If I'm suggesting here, and the default from Catalyst is four, that means that if there's a segment containing five words or more, it's possibly just a segment. It's not likely to be a term. I also have the ability to examine the actual content of the segments and I can exclude terms with only lowercase or letters for example. And if I look at the numbers here, I, uh, this option alone accounts for over a hundred uh, terms. So just using these very powerful checkboxes has, has really saved me a lot of time going through this manually looking for all these entries that, that look like terms but are not actually terms. So I can look down through the list. It's broken into two groups. The green list here are the words that are included and towards the second half of this uh, grid are the terms or, or segments that really are not considered valid terminology. And you can see here why they tend to be um, more wordy uh, or, for example, all lowercase, as I've excluded lowercase letters, it won't, um, it, won't, it won't be included. But what I can do is just go down through this, let's say, for example, the word DEL. I do not wish to include in my terminology. I get the chance to override my, my uh, Catalyst's decisions. This is all looking fairly good. A very accurate looking content. Um, okay, here, here's something for example. I have a number of ways that I could exclude that, but why don't I just force it to be out? So it goes grey, uh, and it's no longer, I've dropped down the number of terms in that case. And if I'm looking for things that have been excluded in error, I might actually want to turn something on and I can do that. So I can leave it with the arrows which means it, it's, it's included based on the um, controls down here in the second half of the dialog box or I can change that to excluded or included and I can toggle segments through those states. So once I have um, worked with my file, worked with my grid and my list, I'm ready to generate uh, the terminology database. The format uh, supported is of course the industry standard TVX. So once I generate TVX, that's a, a baked term-based file. If I feel that there's going to be some element of processing required a after this expert, I can generate a, a, an Excel CSV file a separated file 
which will just facilitate somebody else coming and doing some work on the content. In this case, I'm going to go to TPX. And um, what that means, if I go and attach that, so what I'm going to do is actually use that to see how um, what are the effects of that. So I'm now attaching uh, that term base that I've just generated to my term sources. And what I'll do in this case now is go and examine a new project. I'm opening a new project. And if I select some of the content within that project, I'm starting straight away to see the effects of my work. So I have just generated terminology entries which came from um, my candidates file and because that was translated I'm now seeing all of those um, translations appear. Search, contents, workspace, search again. So these are um, the approved translations which should be used by a linguist. Okay, and if I'm to go back just to uh, summarize how that works then, so the term harvest's job is to identify term candidates in one file. It compares those uh, with uh, another file to examine the frequency of use, presenting that to the user um, and allowing the user to generate a terminology database in TBX format uh, as a result. Okay, thank you for uh, tuning in. I hope you found that useful. And if you have any uh, comments or queries, please let us know. Um, info at alchemysoftware.com. Thank you.